Good morning and happy Sunday. You are listening to 1230 The Buzz, your talk station, 100.1 The Wiz and 100.3 Cincy's R&B station. I am Queen Miss Ebony J here with you for another episode of Community Conversations. Hope you're staying warm. But of course, today I want to, you know, come in and give you a little new insight about nonprofits. Now, you know, if you've never listened to the show, Community Conversations is where we come to talk about nonprofits and the great things that they're doing in the community and how they're making an impact. But guess what? Today's guest is a little different. I mean, they're they're, they're not different, but the same kind of, but they are a nonprofit. But they do something special that all the nonprofits need to know about. They help you get your boards together when putting together a nonprofit. And I'm super excited because I have in here with me the both program director, Mr. Jay Shax. How are you doing today, King? I'm doing well. Thank you for the opportunity to share uh, our story. Yes, I'm so glad to have you on. We interview nonprofits all the time. I'm always talking to nonprofits, so I figured this would be a great show to come on and talk about the amazing things that you all do. Well, thank you. You know, we are part of the BOLD program as part of the Leadership Council for Nonprofits. So this is a collective of about 260, 65 growth every day of uh, nonprofits all throughout Cincinnati. And part of this program is the creation of this BOLD program, which trains and encourages people to be on nonprofit boards and, and really, uh, Ebony, put their, put their passion into action. That's what it's all about. Now, we also are joined today with um, one of the people that help with the board and is a partner and helps with doing a lot of the recruiting, Ms. Lauren. Um, how are you doing, Ms. Lauren Elise? Is it Tudor? Tudor. Lauren Elise Tudor. Tudor. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Nice to talk to you, Ebony Day. I am doing super well, staying warm on this cold, wintry day. It is cold, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Yes, it is. Yes. But yeah, I'm but glad you ready. was it's ready. Fine. I'm glad you was able to join us, though. Yes. Yes. Honored to be here. Honored to be here. Yeah. Also, really grateful to work with Jay through the Leadership Council for Nonprofit Bold Program. They've got a really robust year lined up. 2022 so we're excited to tell you all about it well yes let's kick it off first just in case no one has ever heard what bold is tell us what bold is what it does and the big purpose behind it well we are a six-week virtual nonprofit board leadership training program with which is a mouthful and basically what we're doing is trying to motivate and train uh, folks who want to Make the community a better place to live by being engaged on a nonprofit board. So we give you the basics, help you get set up so that when you uh, you can find a nonprofit that matches to the things that you believe in and uh, and feel you want to do good work in in uh, Cincinnati, Greater Cincinnati, and also you know it uh, gives you the information you need to know what you're going to be facing when you walk in the door. So it's both informational but also inspirational in that there's uh, we really want to harness uh, the energy here in Cincinnati, you know, to make our community better and help nonprofits survive. These have been, as you know, uh, some really tough times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. It, it really has. And my question, because I know you said it's for, um, six weeks, is it every day throughout the six weeks or is it a once a week type of deal? That's a great question. We've, we've designed the program to make it as easy as possible to fit into everybody's uh, schedule. So we meet every Thursday from 11 a.m. Uh, to 1 p.m. So, you know, you can sneak some lunch in there. We don't judge if you're eating and chewing while we uh, we, we have the, the course. And so we have an online component, about a half hour a week of, of time to work online and then come to the class and have discussions about what makes a good board member, 
um, legal responsibilities, financial responsibilities, um, how to take the fear out of fundraising. Yeah. Um, work, uh, and it's really, really the centerpiece of, of our year is also working on diversifying boards. We've got some real uh, struggles here in Cincinnati in far, as far as our boards looking like the people who are being served yeah. and being more, being more representative of our community. So how do you place people? Because I know you said that you do that, and it's very important to make sure it's diversified. Does the nonprofit reach out to you, or is it more like after the person has gone through the training, they can express the type of nonprofit that they want to go work with? Well, we do uh, uh, kind of an inventory. We have you, to, you know, at the start of the program, we get a sense from every student. The classes are really only 35 to 40 people, so it's very personalized. Okay. So we get a sense of what you're interested in. And then because the Leadership Council has 260-plus nonprofits, you know, we've got every imaginable, you know, type of service there. And then, uh, you're right, to your point, we start to, we open the door and start to make that connection. So we find out what you're interested in, and we will uh, match you up with a nonprofit that that fits your goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, that's amazing. So what is it like to apply? What do we need to get started? Well, you can go to our website if you go to uh, the Leadership Council. And I'm embarrassed; I forgot our next website. So I'm going to get I'm going to get that. It's uh, leadershipcouncil uh, dot com dot us. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I'm you out, Jay. It's, it's yeah. leadershipcouncil dot us backslash b o l d, and that will take you to the current. Uh, class application, excuse me, for class registration for the 2022 year. Um, the class spots are filling up pretty fast. Uh, we want to make sure we mention that it is a super one of the more competitive programs in our region. Um, so if you do miss the cutoff for the cohort nine, cohort ten is just opening up, and we've got a really good waiting list going on there too. So don't feel like you're missing out in any way. Um, please feel free to go ahead and apply just to, so you can secure a spot in this year's cohort. Now, are there any scholarships um, available? You know, what if you have the desire to want to do it but don't, you know, really have the funds? Is there a way to get assistance? Absolutely. We have a pretty generous scholarship program. If you happen to work for a nonprofit, uh, the price is reduced. And there are scholarship opportunities there. And what we find is that um, many employers uh, are more than willing to pick up the tuition costs. And um, if if you apply and want to get in, I'll tell you, there's lots of avenues to make sure that that the cost is covered in some way, shape, or form. And so, uh, like Lauren said, the the deadline is Tuesday. So you only have a couple days. And uh, the classes are filling up fast, but we have four different opportunities. If you don't make this one, there's another one uh, uh, in the spring, and then we have one, a couple in the fall and, and winter. So lots of opportunities. Lauren, I know that you are an entrepreneur and a partner working with both. Um, What would you say is one of the most challenging things that you've noticed that nonprofits deal with? Oh, uh, absolutely. They, nonprofits in our region and across the country really struggle with um, in doing uh, recruitment strategies around increasing their diversity of thought and of ethnicity. Um, and that's pretty, that's pretty important to have on a well-rounded and robust board. There are so many benefits that come out of making sure that all voices are included at the table. In fact, I think it's probably an essential part to the success of the future of that nonprofit if more voices of diverse backgrounds and experiences are included at the table. Um, they have a direct correlation to social change and strong communities in our in our community in our world, in our region. So um, I have found it personally very fulfilling to in, be included in board service, especially with um, Planned Parenthood Southwest Ohio region where Jay and I met, actually. Um, and 
And so in my tenure in this community, um, to be able to give of my time, my talent, my treasure, my energy, my my relationships, and my story yeah. um, has been incredible to shaping my expertise in uh, building a business as well as serving in um, organizations that do really, really good work. Just fully amazing it's, it's anytime I talk to someone and I hear their passion about what it is that they do it's just so refreshing because so many people work every single day and they're miserable they're not where they want to be but I'm right. just listening to all the joy in your voice and it sounds like <laughs> something you truly love <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I've always been a person with a heart for community, um, no matter where I've lived in the world. And I have found really deep roots here in the Cincinnati community for quite a while. Um, and that's just my a firsthand account, but I know tens of almost hundreds of people now um, who feel very similarly. I do want to point out for employers who are thinking about um introducing this opportunity to, to their, their staff. There's, there's, there's plenty of great ROI to be expected uh, by pushing someone or encouraging, I really should say, encouraging someone to participate in the Bold Talk program. Um, I think it really helps the bottom line for recruitment and retention. Um, it also kind of really reinforces their commitment to di diversity and inclusion efforts. Um, not to mention, it's, the Bowl program really reinforces credibility and reputation for your organization, Yeah. Um, as well as increased professional development and ultimately corporate responsibility for making sure that they have staff, uh, a staff and workforce that is well-rounded and um, committed to the growth and uh, expansion of their organizational future. Um, just from experience being on boards, people have different expectations. So I think it's super important um, and, like you said, beneficial to an organization that's a nonprofit to have someone come to this kind of workshop and get this kind of love, um, get this kind of information because they're not... Like you said, they're, they're going to have some benefits here. Like, your person is going to know what to do. People are going to mm -hmm. be trained. Um, I think, right. d don't you all do mentors? Give them a mentor, too? We do, and, and the mentors uh, are matched on day one. And so the mentor guides you uh, through this process and begins to open up these connections. You know, it's not just a matter of us checking off nonprofits to put you on a board. It's finding that that passionate connection that is, you know, starts with what you believe in and the work you want to do. So the mentors continue after you leave the six-week po uh, program. Uh, we continue to have the mentor contact 30 days out of uh, leaving the program, then another, you know, 60 days and then 90 so that, you know, they're guiding you. And, you know, some people are ready to jump right on a board. Other people want to serve on a committee or a YP group. You know, others want a little time. The important thing is we want to keep you engaged and we want to be part of your journey so that you end up at a place that uh, you feel good about and the nonprofit feels good about. If you just tuned in, this is 12 Think the Buzz, your talk station on 101.1 1 The Wiz. 100.3 Cincy's R&B station. I am Queen Miss Ebony J, and I'm glad to be here. You know, it's cold, but we in here. I have two amazing people with me. I'm the bold program director, Mr. J. Shax, and then I also have Lauren Tudor here, and we're talking about nonprofit organizations and the importance of making sure that board members are trained so that way they can can execute effectively and if you're just just tuning in you're you missed a little bit of the information about the virtual nonprofit board leadership training program that they have that six weeks guess what enrollment is open right now and all you have to do is head on over to the website and register leadershipcouncil.us backslash bold make sure you go on and check it out because it will be really beneficial to your board members. Now, I want to go back and talk about that because I know when you join boards, 
um, you know, you'll have a title. Everybody wants to get a title, right? But you don't know exactly what you're supposed to do in that role. It's like, I just want to be the treasurer or I want to be the person over the committee. But then I just really just want to be a boss, right? So how do you work with them to make sure that they really truly understand their role and how they can be beneficial for the nonprofit's bottom line? That's a that's a great point, and, and uh, we should make that a T-shirt. I, we all want to be the boss. I think that <laughs> you know that you can run into trouble, as, as we all know, on a nonprofit board yeah. because a good board is a supervisory board. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and these nonprofits have really talented uh, people who are working there, CEOs and treasurers, and you know people handling handling all the day all the day to day stuff. So a good board understands that, you know, they're operating not in the weeds, but high up to help make sure the, you know, the, the stay on course and stay in the right direction and help support uh, rather than, you know, be the boss, as you say. Uh, and that's, you know, those are really important lessons that come out of this program. And we hear that from nonprofit CEOs. They appreciate the fact that our graduates come to the table knowing, you know, what their best role is, knowing how to uh, be a positive force rather than being a distraction. Yes. Yeah. And I was going to add... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Moore. I'm sorry. I was just going to add that uh, to Jay's statement that an effective board is somebody, uh, a great board that has diversity not only within its members, but also diversity within its talents. So this is always a really great uh, professional development opportunity to serve on a board. If you've been in a role in your current organization and you really wanted to expand into perhaps human resources or learn deeper accounting practices or perhaps governance and um, other strategic measures that ensure the future and vitality of an organization, board service is an incredible way to get those skills add them to your resume in such a way that it might lend itself to um, elevation throughout your organization or uh, prepared uh, preparement for a different role altogether. Before we go, um, I know we have like three more minutes left. I want to make sure I ask this question because with COVID, you know, people are over the virtual. It's like, oh, I can barely retain the information. I'm not going to be able to learn. Can you express to us what we can expect through this virtual training, what the sessions are like? I just want to make sure we get a full overview. Well, thank you. And and there are the the two steps. We have the online training component, which you do at your own speed. There are no online tests or long papers to finish. But, you know, it's a collection of voices from the nonprofit community um, that you wouldn't normally have, you know, access to so easily. So the, the, the courses start with that. And so we expect our students to, at some point over a week, spend some time and watch those segments and then as far as zoom fatigue we try and make these sessions as engaging as possible and have discussions rather than lectures we we bring in uh, professionals you know ceos and board members who can talk about the real world you know it's not a lot of theory stuff it's what boards are facing and things that that you face as a board member so we try and combat zoom fatigue by by making things as interesting and engaging as possible. Did you want so to add a anything? Promise, a back of a promise, but uh, uh, we intend to keep it, and we've had a really good track record. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, James won an Emmy, so he's definitely going to keep it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll good. You know, I just leave that in the background. It's on the top shelf in my Zoom shot. So I appreciate you uh, shouting that out. But oh, yeah. I think oh, yeah. what's great it. is having is having all the voices. Uh, that we have. And that's the difference here is that you're not sitting and being lectured to. It's an engaging conversation because, you know, that's what we hope you find when you join a board. Yeah. I love it. Look, I'm excited. So the deadline is Tuesday for this session, right, for this cohort. But when is the next one, just in case they do not have the funds and cannot do it and make it for this part, when is the next session? Uh, the next session after this one, uh, we start opening up and uh, enrollment 
uh, closes on that to March 25th. But like I said, the uh, the uh, scholarship, we have a, a variety of ways to get scholarships. All you have to do when you apply is check the box and we'll follow up with you. So don't feel nervous at all. If you are on a board or thinking about being a part of a nonprofit, why not get the training that you need so you can succeed and be great? They have you over at Bold, okay? Log on to the website, leadershipcouncil.com. I'm sorry, dot us backslash Bold, okay? Get the information, go ahead and register, and do not be afraid to take that next step because 2022 is the year that we're just going to be great and we're going to do what we're supposed to do we're going to live out our purpose you hear lauren's passion right she's living out her dreams right now and you can be living out yours too thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with me today thank you thank you so much for your for your great energy and good karma appreciate it definitely lauren got me excited (laughs) you stay warm out here everybody stay safe and uh, we will hope to connect with you soon. Yes, ma'am, please. Thank you so much. No problem. This is 1230 The Buzz, your talk station, 101.1 The Wiz, and 100.3. Since these R&B stations stick around, I have more community conversations on the way.